So what does all this turkey cannon business have to do with playing the trumpet? Well, we are turkey cannons, literally. Here's what I mean. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, today's episode of Ryan's Trumpet is going to be about all things breath related. Inspired by a question from Diego Medina, uh, who asked about how to use the three focal points from episode one and whether or not he should be blowing harder. I should probably put a little disclaimer before we go into this. The approach to the trumpet that I'm really interested in is essentially an approach that will keep a crossover artist healthy. So somebody who plays a bunch of different styles of music, which uh, in my opinion is, is pretty much all of us. It's the vast majority of us. This isn't necessarily about playing lead, which is its own very specific niche skill set and one that there are a lot of people who could give you a lot better information than me about. So, I... so one of the things that really helped me um, understand the character of a healthy exhale was, was having someone teach me that, that when we inhale, there's a certain amount of air that all I have to do to have it come out is literally just relax everything. Because what's happened when I inhale is the air comes into my lungs, right? There's more pressure inside my lungs than in the atmosphere outside of me. And so if all I do is let go, a bunch of air is going to come out of me until it gets to the point where the pressure outside of me and the pressure inside of me equalizes. So for this reason, uh, one of the things uh, that, that I often heard was to play on the top half of my air to play on the part of the air that comes out by itself if you just let go. Another incredibly helpful um, bit of information uh, for me as a player was when I started to read interviews with the great Arnold Jacobs. And uh, one of the things that he would speak to so brilliantly was just pointing out the fact that of the more than 600 muscles in our body, the vast majority of them are come in pairs, pairs of opposites essentially. So the bicep and the tricep is one example of that. I can curl my arm really quickly if my tricep is relaxed. I can extend my arm really quickly if my bicep is relaxed. But if I want to make it really hard to move, I can contract the tricep while I'm trying to curl. And if I do that, then I get myself into trouble because those two muscles are fighting with each other and they're making things way less efficient. The same thing is true of the breathing mechanism. The idea is that we have muscles that inhale, we have muscles that exhale, and we get into trouble as trumpet players whenever we pit those two muscles against each other. If you take a breath, and then you pit those muscles against each other by locking down the throat, you're, you're, you're like, your throat's tight and everything's fighting each other. That feels like support to us, but it's not. It's decidedly not support. The breathing mechanism can be moved, used for breathing, which is like inhaling and exhaling, like a bellows, and it can be used for combat, essentially bracing yourself to get a hit or to take a fall, and it can be used for bearing down, like to go to the bathroom. We want to learn how to only use the exhale muscles while we're exhaling. We don't want to set things up so that they're fighting with each other. So that's the idea behind a sigh. It's a letting go. It's just allowing the exhale muscles to do what they do. One concept in particular is helpful in learning how to play the trumpet when we're thinking about how to use the breath. And my favorite way to talk about it is by talking about a famous episode of the Mythbusters called the Turkey Cannon. And in that episode, they attempt to answer the age-old question, how fast does a turkey have to fly to smash through the front 
of an airplane. And predictably for the Mythbusters, if you're going to find out how fast a turkey needs to fly to smash things, you're going to have to build a giant turkey cannon. The turkey cannon they built was made of two basic parts, a compression chamber and a nozzle to shoot the turkey out. So they get ready for their first firing of the turkey cannon and they set the compression chamber to 250 PSI. They launch the turkey and it's success. Which gets them asking, how slow can the turkey fly and still smash through the front of the airplane? So they get the turkey cannon ready for a couple of other firings. On take two, they set it to 225 PSI and something astonishing happens. The turkey flies out even faster than before. So they drop the PSI again, this time to 200, fire the turkey, and once again, the turkey flies out even faster. Both times they were surprised to see that when they lowered the compression in the compression chamber, the velocity of the turkey increased. So what was going on? Well, there's something at work here called Bernoulli's Principle. And Bernoulli's Principle basically states that if you have gas moving from a large chamber through a smaller chamber and back into a large chamber again, uh, the higher the pressure in the compression chamber, the lower the rate of flow leaving the smaller chamber. So high pressure, equals low flow and low pressure equals high flow. So what does all this turkey cannon business have to do with playing the trumpet? Well, we are turkey cannons, literally. Here's what I mean. We're basically a compression chamber, which is everything behind the lips. It's the oral cavity and chest, and that's connected to a nozzle, the aperture, our lips, and our job is to create the highest flow rate possible in front of the nozzle, which means having the lowest pressure possible in the compression chamber, which is everything behind the lips. So here are some words that have been helpful to me and my students. Falling, so feeling like the air is falling out of us is a really helpful way to think of the exhale. Easy, um, fluid, uh, like a sigh. Sigh is a great word for how we want to feel the, the, just the character of the exhale when we play. I will often use like an analogy with my students of blowing on a candle but where you don't want the, the flame to go out. Just like a very gentle where you're just making the flame flicker without going out. I've heard people also use an analogy of cooling like hot soup. Like how would you blow on hot soup to cool it off? And letting go is a wonderful way to think about exhaling through the trumpet. I love an Arnold Jacobs quote where he says that we need to find weakness in the body. He says, strength is our enemy and weakness is our friend. There are lots of other words that I've heard people use that I haven't seen be as helpful. Words like harder, like if you're blowing harder, if you're thinking about blowing harder, it's probably not helping your playing. Phrases like more air, a lot of the time that will backfire. With the vast majority of students, that will backfire. By and large, my students need help being coached into learning how to let go of the